I'm going to be a good company man here and set the rest of the presenters up. It's to Stephen's point, the bar is high. I'm going to bring it really far down so that anybody else can really outshine the rest of the presenters from the conference. Um, OK, so I'm going to go beyond age and gender, um, really trying to shed light on our audiences. Because uh, I think if you think back to, so I used to work at Nielsen, and Nielsen uh, was, it was in the now Facebook offices, which was the Wanamaker building. Uh, Wanamaker building, Wanamaker was the department store in New York City, and John Wanamaker is the guy who's famous for saying, I know 50% of my ad dollars are wasted, I just don't know which 50%. And the funny thing is, as we learn more and more, um, I think we're coming to somewhat of a realization that it's actually not 50% of the dollars that are wasted. It might be closer to have been closer to the 90%. I think every day we shed a little bit of new light into what we don't know, because it's that age old, Idiom, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. And I think as more and more data becomes available and uh, to the market, I think we're finding out new and interesting things. And I think what's really driving the, the data uh, influx into the market is this transition that's occurred, right? We've gone from a world where, you know, a good 50, 60 years ago, the world was dominated by the Don Drapers, right? The, the most important man in the advertising community was that creative guy, the guy who came in and saved the pitch, who, who put all the effort in that everybody loved, that was really the driving force behind really the ad industry in general. But if you watch Mad Men, you'll notice as the seasons go by, guess who gets a bigger and bigger office? It's Harry Case. It's the guy who's in charge of media. Because he's getting bigger and bigger budgets. He's spending more and more money. TV's becoming important. And media has continued to accelerate over the years. And I think new media is really a reflection of what we see with these other two headshots, right? We've gone from a world where creative was the core of advertising. And creative is still fundamentally an important part of the, of the process, to Lincoln's point. But we've also gone to a world where now we've got addressable devices, where we can actually identify a device and serve advertising to that specific device. And that's probably best illustrated by Larry Page from Google, who really brought the world this new technology in a scaled way. And then you've got what's happening with Facebook, which is translating those devices into people, right? And now we're addressing individuals. We're not just addressing devices. We're not just saying this machine saw the ad three times. Now we're saying this person saw the ad three times. And that's really changing the world because the world is going addressable, right? I'll give you a couple stats to back that up. Here's a chart that shows the projected growth of the Internet of Things. Right? So what does the Internet of Things have to do with media? It has a lot to do with media. Right? What we're looking at in this chart is the growth trajectory. And that there at the bottom there is uh, 2020, we're looking at 50 billion devices that have Internet connectivity. In 2020, there'll be 7 billion people on the planet. That's seven devices with Internet con connectivity per person. And that would include people who live in poverty, people who are under the age of one people who are over the age of 80, people who don't carry addressable devices. So think about what that means in our personal lives. Think about what those devices are feeding back into the marketer's uh, toolkit. And that's really an interesting world that we're starting to live in. We're, we're, we're moving into a world now where we're knowing things about consumers that we didn't know before. You know, if you look at, I have a, Goog I have a Nest in my house for a thermostat. There's one on the first floor, one on the second floor. That, that device knows when I'm home. It knows. Uh, if it's cold outside, if it's warm outside. You know, if I have a car, if, you, if I went and bought a Tesla, my Tesla knows where I'm driving, how fast I'm driving. It knows these technologies are starting to understand things about us that we didn't even know about ourselves. They're understanding our emotional states. They're understanding things that are really opening the door to you know, a new kind of me-first marketing. Yeah, me-first marketing is really about uh, me as the consumer controlling my marketing experience, but at the same way that I'm trying to control my marketing experience, I'm throwing off this data exhaust that the marketers get to take advantage of. So it's also a me-first marketing perspective from the marketer. Right? The marketer gets that me-first participation as well. And so it's really something that's driving the future, I think, of where the media industry is heading. And I think if there's any doubt, you know, we're in the golden age of media. And I'll give a couple more statistics to sort of relate to why that might be the case. So 46% of 18 to 24 year olds are second screening. And Jolene talked about this earlier. That's the idea of shifting attention between a cell phone and a television. Uh, 60, at the end of this year, 60 million households, cable subscribing households, will be addressable with advertising. That's a pretty phenomenal number. And when you serve an ad to a cable household that's addressable, you get a 30%, 38% less tune away. Meaning that if I'm watching an ad that's specifically targeted to me, 
in my me-first marketing world, guess what, I'm less likely to turn the change channel, well, which makes absolute sense. This is an ad that is about something that I care about. And so we see this is really coming up in the market. Um, the forecast is by 2020, there'll have been a 19,000%, a very unrealistic percent to put up on the slide, but it's very true. We're starting from small numbers and we're going to these massive numbers in terms of addressable TV advertising sold. And then just look at what happened in digital. Digital has been the, the microcosm from which all the TV innovation is springing, which is now we're looking at a world where in 2015 we're expecting 55% of media dollars to be purchased programmatically. P&G is aiming for 74%, right? So we've got some really important things happening in the industry. We're in the golden age of media innovation. Well, guess what? Measurement is typically lagged innovation. Um, and this is an article from Ad Age, uh, and it's, it's a very relevant article. It's really pointing out the fact that, uh, and, and I understand it from a businessman's perspective, right? So when we ran a re research company, it was very much a, what innovations do we pursue? Because you don't know today what's gonna be the future, right? You know that there's 15 different things that people are proposing to be the future. Well, as a measurement company, what do I measure? Do I measure this thing and then see it fail and then have spent all that money measuring something that fails that nobody embraces? Or do I measure this thing that might succeed? And so it's really hard as a measurement company to, to be on top of innovation. But I think you know, the last presentation had some interesting points about the two-year-olds being able to innovate and do things that you, can't do, that you couldn't do decades ago. And I think we're at a tipping point now in the industry where measurement really needs to evolve. It needs to innovate alongside of other me measurement techniques. And we see people who are innovating stepping into those roles, whether that's in the case of TV measurement, like folks like Rentrack stepping into the fold and opening the door and shedding light into this category and understanding things beyond just the top broadcast, so looking all the way down to the, to the bottom of the dial. So what, what I'm proposing here is that I think we really need to move from a world of measurement to a world of effectiveness, particularly as it relates to audiences and, and, and media. And, What's behind this is that um, what Marie was talking about yesterday in her presentation about most research is looking backwards. And that's what measurement does. Measurement is, is measuring what I did. It's measuring how far I jumped. It's measuring things that you've done already. Effectiveness is very much a different way of looking at the world. And when you think about audiences, we need to look at audiences as, as to how the effective they are. And that means answering some fundamental questions as we go through the um, evolution into this effectiveness world. So, and you'll notice that these three statements here, and I'm not saying this is the census of everything that we need to do to be effective, but these three statements I think are really key to what we really need to start to focus on to become uh, good at, and effective at measuring uh, what we're doing. Optimizing what we value. Optimizing where we're valuing. Optimizing who we're valuing. It's, you know, it's the who, what, when, where, why. But the key phrase here is optimize. Right? Effectiveness is about measuring today what's happening now and changing this and making decisions based on that so that when we do measure, we've kind of controlled our destiny. I mean, we've been stumbling around in the dark. We don't know what we're getting. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what's, which 50% is effective and which one's not. How do we really change the world unless we can move from a measurement to effectiveness perspective? Okay, and I'm gonna give you a couple examples as to how I believe we're stumbling around in the dark and just by illustrating what happens when you kind of crack the door and shed light on some different scenarios. So one example is talking about true measures of exposure. So in a digital world, we'll talk very specifically about the internet. The internet is not just the computer, right? When I first got online 15 years ago, so I sat down on my friend's Mac and I helped him get on to AOL and we surfed around the internet and that was a very contained ecosystem. But guess what? Today we're all in these sort of stratified, diversified ecosystems. So you've got exposure to occur on home computers, work computers, tablets, smartphones, Apple TVs, Roku's, uh, connected devices. All of these devices, they're all dressable and they're all having advertising show up on them. But yet, as a measurement and, and ecosystem, we're measuring each device independently. And then we're not overlapping and understanding how those devices are unified. And so moving to a, a, a measure of universal identifiers, identifiers that say, you are an individual taking what the media folks are putting into the space, folks like Facebook and Google, we're measuring people, where they're serving to people, we need to take that serving to people and translate that into the measurement world. So move from those silos. And I'll give you an example of what not understanding this really means. So this is some data from our, from our system. Um, and this is really giving you an idea of what happens when you don't understand these 
universal identifiers. So if you take all the advertising that you, that you look at in the course of a year, and you look at the average frequency delivered against that advertising, and you see how it breaks out here. Now I'm gonna tell you one piece of information. So we do a lot of, obviously, brand research, and one of the things that we noticed was that in brand research, when you get beyond 16 exposures, you're basically, if you think about the accumulation curve of brand response, whether it's familiarity, purchase intent, awareness, and a lot of different other metrics, you look at it, it usually tends to flatten out at 16 exposures. You're really incrementally gaining almost nothing at exposures beyond that. So if 16 is that flattening point, pretty much everything beyond 16 exposures is wasted. Right? Well, 53% of the impressions we saw delivered over the course of a year to consumers, to individuals, universal identifiers, was waste. Right? 53%. This is that John Wanamaker part, point, which, of which percentage of my ads is wasted and which is not. Here's a really clear example of that. These are impressions that are in the billions that are going to waste because we don't really have a good, clear understanding of what's happening. Now, if I looked at it on an individual media basis, it might not look like that at all. If I looked at, at you know, my exposure cur distribution curve on a cell phone, it might be that, wow, my maximum exposure is seven. But once you cobble that together with all the exposures that are happening, you find you're hitting the same people. Because one of the things that we do well in, in digital is we do targeting well. We understand where consumers are. And we think we're gaining reach, but a lot of times we're just gaining the same audience over and over again. Likewise, another example here. Consumers are, by their very nature, multi-channel. Jolene's presentation this morning was really hitting on that point, and I, I couldn't, uh, I just want to stress that point again. The, the blurring of the lines between channels is really something that's prevalent and it's happening more and more these days. And so there's this sense that um, that's the most important thing we need to try to start to understand. How do we understand the overlap between audiences across different platforms and devices? Right, so when we look, we need to look at the data in that context. And here's some data that we have. We combined our data with the RentTrack folks. And we decided, okay, let's look at an overlapping audience, single source, what do we start to learn from that? Well, one of the things we learned, this is a, a, a fairly sizable campaign, but that cross-platform doesn't always equal improved reach. And what you're looking at here is, a, is an attempt at improved reach, but through the lack of information, the lack of insight into the data, this, this, planning, uh, this team that planned this campaign didn't really truly understand what they were getting. Right? So what they were trying to do is reach men 18 to 24. What I've shown you here on the one side is the campaign target reach. So you can see they're really doing a great job on reaching men 18 to 24. The blue bar is TV only reach. The gray bar is TV and internet reach combined. The orange bar, which you can't see because it's so small, is internet reach by itself, right? So you would think that in this case, they were trying to increase reach. They go to the internet, they use that as a media to bring in that additional reach, and they're not really getting it. They're getting a lot of overlap. Uh, and you're seeing that happening in that target audience. And what you see is happening as a function of that is the average frequency delivered to men 18 to 24 online is huge, 25. We're well beyond that waste threshold. And so not understanding this, right? This is getting back to what I was saying earlier. Not understanding where that waste is occurring and where that overlap is occurring is really detrimental to the marketer. And my last example here is one I'm calling people are awesome, right? If we had to go through life, um, I'm gonna pivot off of your Hunger Games analogy earlier, right? If I'm like in a very specific uh, district, right? And I have to define myself on that district for the rest of my life, that's really kind of not something that you wanna have in your life. You, want, you don't wanna be defined as men 18 to 24, women 25 to 34. You wanna be defined as something that really reflects who we are. We, don't, we all dress differently for a reason. We all don't wear the same uniform. We all don't think of ourselves as the same people. Why do we, in a media world, try to measure each other as just these individual buckets of age, sex? We need to move to an evolved media standard. And there are people out there who are starting to do this. Uh, RentTrack, I use them as another example there, who are doing a lot of this work. We're starting to see this emerging. We've been doing it in digital for some time now. But we're also going back in time. We're also now measuring reach and frequency among specific age gender breaks, right? We need to really evolve the media standards so we're looking at things beyond age and gender, even just getting to the very basic, what I'd call advanced demographics. An advanced demographic of income or presence of children or education, that's not that advanced, but believe me, in the media measurement space, that's ridiculously advanced. So, and then moving beyond that to like, gee, did I reach, what was my reach amongst people who drive Audis? What was my reach amongst people who purchase a particular product? And then, you understand when you look at that data, you start to understand things in a different light. And I'll give you the, the example. So in partnership with IRI, 
we combined our data with IRI and we started to look at sites and reach amongst demographies for a particular product. Right, so in this case, we're looking at a, a salty snack category, uh, and I blinded the sites to not embarrass anybody. Um, but you're looking at here on the left-hand side of the chart is the reach amongst the, the product's target audience, men under the age of 45. Wow, all the sites are fantastic. I'm gonna put all these sites in my buy, I'm gonna buy them all, I'm gonna get fantastic results. Well, guess what? When you look at those sites and you break them out by the percentage of people on those sites that are actually purchasing that product, there's dramatic discrepancies across the different sites in the plan. And so there's insights that we're missing. So I think really what we need to start to try to do is shed light in the market, to really open the door. I think one of the, the, the interesting th the comments this morning was actually the one Candace made. You know, what would you do if you had $500,000? I'd spend money on insights, because we really don't know what we don't know. And I think that's true, and that's gonna continue to be true. You know? I'm not saying that we've solved it today. I'm not saying we'll have solved it 10 years from now. Humans are dramatically complex creatures. We'll never fully understand how to sort of manipulate ourselves or find out ways to understand ourselves better. That's, there's a never ending road of understanding. But at the same time, we need to move beyond where we are today, where we were 30 years ago as a measurement standard. Because what's happening is marketers are paying the price for bad measurement. Right? We need to start following the total consumer footprint. We need to follow them where they go, who they are. We need to identify all the media channels they're exposed to and try to look at that in combination. And we need to move beyond measuring just these static measures of demography. That's the way the media space is moving. That's the way the measurement space is moving. So evolving is where we need to go. We need to open that door, shed light on what we're truly getting in our media plans, what we're truly buying. Right? So look, Miller Brown has been leading the industry in measuring the effectiveness uh, of campaigns for a number of years. We've, we've been potentially conspicuously absent from helping understand the effectiveness of audiences because it really wasn't something that was something you did. But I guess I'm here today in some respects to talk a little bit and announce that we're now moving into the audience effectiveness space. Right? We believe it's a, it's a sort of a new part of the category is trying to understand how do you combine data sources with owned assets so that you can really try to really understand and shed light on audience effectiveness. Are, am I reaching the right people? Am I meet, reaching those Audi drivers? Am I reaching people who, who buy General Mills cereals? Am I reaching people who are in my demography? So you'll hear a, bit, a lot more about this from us in the coming weeks. We haven't made an announcement beyond just now. Uh, you'll be seeing this in, in the coming weeks. But what we've really tried to do is look at this as an ecosystem play. We don't just want to measure in our own isolated world. We're in a new media world where that new media world means partnerships matter. And so we've partnered with a lot of the leading, leader, leading brands in the industry, whether that's Rentrack, where we can combine to really start to look at the overlap between TV and online, uh, or the folks with, from Cantor Shopcom and IRI, uh, really trying to understand consumer and buyer graphics above and beyond what the standard is today, and partnering with DSPs and DMPs to really try to understand that at scale. That's really where I think the generation of measurement needs to move to. It, it helps us transition from measurement to effectiveness. So I'm gonna leave you with one last question uh, because I think getting addressable right means you're getting digital right. And I think we need to, always, we need to take a step back. Digital is, is, is dead, by the way, right? So uh, Stephen DeMarco uh, showed me this article, you know, and I didn't time this on purpose, but there's an article on the front page of the business and tech section of the Wall Street Journal today. TV has the web in its sites, right? It's basically an article talking about how TV data is now being married with things like category purchase, so I can target people who buy yogurt on TV. Well, guess what? That's what the internet has been doing for the last decade. And I think digital is really addressable. And I think that's how we need to look at it, because quite frankly, the digital folks are the ones that are innovating the TV space. And we're all becoming this hybrid. In the same way that audiences are hybridizing, so too are the technologies and methods. And so I think getting addressable right means you're getting digital right. And, I, and the last question I'll leave you with is, are your audiences effective? Thank you.